จะไอ้นั่นเลยกลายเป็นสองไฟล์แล้วผมต้องไอ้นี่รวมอีกนัทพล L อยู่ทางนู้นนะครับแล้วก็ชยุทธพลชยุทธพลถ่ายถ่ายรูปไหมผมด้วยขี้กันเดินไปดูตั้งแต่เที่ยงแล้วจ้ะตั้งแต่เที่ยงเออเออเอองั้นโอเคนอนต่อไปนอนต่อไปกำลังวัยกำลังกินกำลังนอนแล้วก็กอนกอนเคบอาบิโชดไปแล้วเช็คอ๋ออันนี้ชานนท์เนาะของชานนท์ผมติ๊กของชานนท์แล้วก็คนพิเศษเนี่ยกำมลสิทธิ์ไปไหนเอ่ยกำมลสิทธิ์ผมลุ้นอยู่เนี่ยโอเคผ่านครับสุภรัตยอดแก้วทางนู้นครับแล้วก็พามพามอ่อนนุ่มนัทดลนัทดลเอามีอยู่ในนี้แล้วหรือมีเปล่าอ่ามีครับหกสิบสี่ไม่มีนะมีสิบห้าเท่านั้นนะครูคุณไม่เห็นส่งอะไรอ่ะไม่เห็นตามสบายครับเลขที่สองหมอกินครูทิพไม่เห็นมีใบอะไรเลยของของพามนัทดลเอาเอาโอเคโอเคอีกละเป็นของทีนะที่ช่วยเหลือผมตลอดนัทดลมีไข้อ่อนๆและแสบตาแล้วไม่เห็นส่งมาให้ผมโอเคออนลิฟซิกไม่มีใครแจ้งผมอริยวุฒินั่งนี่นะครับทุริศักดิ์ใกล้ๆกันวัสันตพัฒน์ท้ายๆอยู่นี่นะครับขาดกระมวลสิทธิ์อยู่นะครับแล้วก็กระมวลกระมวลสิทธิ์แล้วก็ศิลวิทย์โพคิดนะผ่านมาเมื่อไหร่ก็ค่อยนั้นเอ้าห้องนี้ผมอัปโหลดขึ้นไปแล้วหรือยังเนี่ยพวกพวกอ่าพหกศูนย์ห้าผมลืมเลยหกศูนย์ห้าอัปโหลดไปแล้วมั้งใช่ปะศูนย์ห้าส่งไปแล้วก็ห้องหกศูนย์สี่อัปโหลดโอเคอ่า Good afternoon everyone welcome you to uh, SCI 3206 officially and one อา oh. okay. ah. โอเคฮะโอเคโอเคกระบวนสิทธิ์ตรงหมายเลขยี่สิบสามครับอูอูไงศิลวิทย์ขาดศิลวิทย์นะศิลวิทย์ไปไหนไม่รู้เขาจะใส่หน้ากากขาวขาวอยู่เนี่ยตรงเนี้ยนั่งเนี้ยโอเคเอ่อ uh, let's talk about our stuff in uh, regarding the question raised by Tara right Uh, he would like to know the detail about this uh, this ten sentence, right? But for an ideal polarizing filter, the transmitted intensity is half the incident intensity. So, what does that mean? Uh,
the idea is the following when you have a uniform distribution when you have the uniform distribution of the polarizing axis you know the light can have polarizing axis or the E field in any direction right around a circle like this okay so we're gonna say that uh, we have uniform uh, the possibility is the same for every direction or right? uniform uh, distribution of the uh, incident uh, polarization axis. Okay, it means the uh, probability of phi is the same and is equal to by 2 pi because uh, in one rotation, okay, you rotate like this, right? And and right. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. Phi can start from zero to two pi, right? For one circle. So the probability of phi will be one by two pi. Okay. Because you don't have any spatial probability to any angle. So every direction has the same probability. So it's going to be one by two pi, right? This is the probability of the axis of the E field or the polarization axis. Okay, in, in one circle you have two pi. But uh, once it passes through this uh, polarization filter, okay, this filter will allow only a certain direction. So the probability that we can meet of C, this uh, tilt angle is only one by two pi. And uh, the intensity from the Malus law is uh, the intensity. The intensity from the Malus law is I uh, equal to I R zero or I max up to you. Okay. Cool size per phi, right? This is the the incident before okay, before it goes uh, to the polarizing a filter and after the polarizing filter is going to have intensity as i right and uh, we're going to find the intensity the average value of the intensity here uh, i bar which is the average intensity that we can get from uh, after the, the the polarizing filter will be uh, the integration from 0 to 2 pi of p phi okay and uh, this one okay i d phi okay i heat การ i ก็คือไอเนี้ยไอเนี้ยมันมีค่าได้ตามไฟ polarizing axis ได้ทุกทิศทางในหนึ่งรอบวงกลมมันจะมีความน่าจะเป็นเท่ากันyou need to 
find this uh, average value or the integration ดังที่บอกไปคราวที่แล้วนะว่ามันจะต้องใช้อินทิเกตนะแต่ผมเข้าใจว่าคุณน่าจะเป็นพวก exceptional นะมีความรู้เรื่องอินทิเกตมาผมก็จะรับลงรายละเอียดเลยนะก็กำลังเรียนอยู่นะครับโอเค so uh, so I can go ahead with that right ก็ก็คุณถามอ่ะเดี๋ยวจะหาว่าผมแบบไม่ใส่ใจคําถามของคุณใช้คําพูดไปเฉยๆผมก็แสดงให้ดูในรายละเอียดเลยแล้วกันครับว่ามันมาได้ยังไงมันลงหนึ่งส่วนสองได้อย่างไรนะครับโอเคเอ่อ we're gonna need to make the equation to that so I bar will be integration from zero to two pi okay from all possible direction One circle will cover uh, zero to two pi, right? So p phi, which is this term, is equal to one by two pi. We're gonna leave one by two pi in this case, okay? At this, and the first portion, okay, portion of p phi, and i, which is i phi here, okay, i zero cosine square phi. So we get i. Zero, which is the intensity before the polarizing field, and then we have cosine square phi, and then d phi, right? The integration is made with respect to the variable phi, all right? Uh, uh, the technique of the integration is that uh, you can uh, move any constant, which doesn't depend on The angle phi out of the integration side, right? Indica integration symbol. We're gonna have here i zero by two pi. Sorry, ครับ Integration zero to two pi and uh, cosine square phi. All right, d phi. Okay. And the integration of cosine square is not easily done. You're gonna recall the basic relation. I'll put my book card just to hold. I'll try to remember. Huh? Can I remember? Can. 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 ห้องสิบหกเองใช่ขับรถมาครับสองชั่วโมงกว่ารถยังติดอ่ะกลับไปมีเหมือนกันเลยนะผมที่ทำงานผมอยู่นครนายกแต่แล้วผมกลับบ้านผมบ้านผมอยู่ลบบุรีเกือบเกือบสามชั่วโมงครับฮะที่พักผมอยู่ในหอหลังมหาวิทยาลัยอยู่ใกล้ๆนั่นแหละมสวอยู่องคลักษ์อยู่คลองสิบหกอะครับไม่ใช่คลองหนึ่งเดี๋ยวคุณก็ต้องไปดิมเบิลกันไม่ใช่เหรอดิมเบิลใช่ปะเดี๋ยวเรียนก็ต้องพาไปใช่ปะเออพายรุ่นพี่บีแล้วคุณไปอะมันอยู่คลองหนึ่งของผมอะคลองสิบหกคลองหนึ่งอะมันจะห่างกันประมาณสามถึงห้ากิโลเมตรเอามานะคุณก็คูณไปสิบหกอ่ะสิบหกทุกวันไม่ใช่คลองหกนะคลองสิบหกครับคลองหกอ่ะคือตรงพวกธัญบุรีที่รถติดๆหนึ่งสองสามนี่ก็ติดไม่แพ้พวกสีลมอ่ะแถวนั้นอ่ะครับสีลมกระดึบกระดึบพวกคลองหนึ่งต้นๆก็กระดึบกระดึบเหมือนกันอ่ะครับก็ก็ไกลไม่เป็นไรเดี๋ยวผมขาทางออกอีกไม่เป็นไรไปเรื่อยโอเคอ่ะ Once you substitute, okay, you cannot do the integration with this term easily. You need to convert it to another uh, simpler form of the trigonometric function. Okay, one of the thing is to consider uh, to uh, the double angle of the cosine. Okay, the double angle says that uh, you have. Cosine of two phi, right? 
as uh, two cosine square of phi minus one. Okay, this is the basic uh, trigonometric identity, right? And then uh, what we need to pay attention is cosine square phi, right? Because uh, we have this term at uh, right here. So you're gonna need to move minus one to be positive one on the left hand side, and you need to move number two to be the divi uh, the denominator uh, denominator to the left hand side. So in conclusion, you're gonna get um, cosine square phi is one by two of cosine two phi uh, plus one. Okay, this is the basic thing you need to manipulate yourself. And I would say you need to be fluent in, in this kind of thing because you would often use it in the bachelor degree or master degree. Okay, we, you still need to use this relation. Okay, uh, now it's time to substitute this one to uh, something inside the integrand. Okay, the former word is called integrand, the function that needs to be inter integrated. Okay. Uh, something inside the integration symbol. Um, okay, you get uh, I zero by uh, I zero by two pi, right? Integration again from zero to two pi, and here you have uh, one by two of cosine two phi plus one. Okay and uh, d5, okay? And uh, you can see that one by two is a constant, okay? It doesn't depend on phi, okay? We can move it out of the integration symbol right here. So you're gonna get i zero by four pi, okay? Like this. And of course, you know the integration relation that uh, if you have two functions like this, uh, integration, oh sorry, integration of f1 x plus f2 x dx, okay, can be uh, the integration of f1 x dx, right, and plus integration of f2 x dx, right? You can separate the integration to this one because the integration is similar to the summation. And uh, the same thing here, we would have uh, two terms of that, okay? Uh, integration from zero to two pi of cosine two phi d phi, okay? d phi. And plus the second term, ผมขออนุญาตเขียนทางขวาเลยนะครับเพื่อไม่ให้มันตกจากกันนะครับ and uh, integration from 0 to 2 pi or it's number 1 right we don't have to write it d5 okay so uh close parenthesis this and uh, let's uh, pay attention to the integration of double angle like right here uh let me, let me write it here. Okay, integration of cosine two x dx. Okay, it would be uh, cosine two x dx uh, will be. There are many techniques. You want me to use that? The so-called change of variable. The technique is called change of variable, like this. Or some books would say uh, substitution, okay? Change of variable. Okay, we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say that's you, okay? This is you. This one is called you, okay? Let's say this is you. Chain of variable. Okay. 
uh, in some in some books they say integration by substitution. In some books they say integration by change of variable, the same technique. Okay. You can say this is you, okay, and uh, คล้ายๆมันเวอร์ชั่นอินดิเคตคล้ายๆเชนดูมันการดิฟใช่ป่ะอันนี้มันอินดิเคตเนี่ยคล้ายๆเชนดูนั่นแหละอ่าโอเค
okay? And uh, you need to take a uh, substitute the lower limit and upper limit from zero to two pi. Okay, that's the for the first term. And the second term, you're gonna have a uh, phi, right? Oh, sorry, not x. Sorry, it's phi. Sorry, sorry. Phi, not x. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, phi. Okay, uh, phi here will be phi from zero and phi from uh, at two pi. Okay, in the closing bracket. Okay, and uh, you now need to take the difference. Okay, find the difference to that i zero by four pi. And right here, we get uh, 1 by 2 of 2. Oh, no, 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 no. Psi of 4 pi. Psi 4 pi will be. Uh, psi 4 pi will be psi 2 pi. And this is equal to psi 0, right? Psi 0 which is actually zero, right? And without doubt, size zero, size zero will be zero, right? Okay, size zero will be zero. So you have actually a zero minus zero, okay, for the first term. And in the second term, you're gonna have two pi minus zero, okay? And close the bracket. Okay, you get two pi minus zero. At the end, and of course, if you go further, it's gonna be uh, two pi and four pi. You get i zero by two. Oh, yes. เข้าใจยังครับทีเนี้ยว่าทําไมมันหารสองเออมันเดินทางมาไกลแต่เขาไม่พูดในชั้นมอปลายเพราะว่ามันใช้อินดิเคชันดังที่ผมบอกคุณ
ร้อนไหมเอ่ยร้อนไหมไม่ร้อนแล้วทำไมตัดไม่รู้สู้ไม่สู้ iPhone 13ไม่ได้ iPhone 13อ่ะไม่เคยตัดเลยนะอัด3ชั่วโมงยังไงมันก็ยาวเป็นไฟล์เดียวอย่างนั้นแหละเออผมก็ซื้อกล้องดีกว่านะเออใช่ผมผมมีนะพวก A7 อะไรนั่นแหะอยู่ที่โต๊ะฮะ A7 นะอยู่ที่ห้องอ่ะให้ผมยกมาดีกว่านะแล้วก็เสียบเมมโมรีการ์ดอะไรครับ15ร้อนแล้วก็ตัดเองทั้งที่แบบจอดอยู่กับแอร์ก็ยังเป็นผมก็ไม่เข้าใจเหมือนกันว่างั้นผมเอายก A7 มาดีกว่าเนาะผมกิ๊กแกขึ้นขาไอ้นั่นอ่ะสามขาเขาเรียกชายพอร์ตอ่ะเออมันเดี๋ยวมันจะกินเพลงฮะผมก็ยกชุดเนี้ยไปอ่ะครับตอน iPhone 13ไม่เกิดปัญหาอะไรเลยสอนสอนต้องอัดอาจารย์สอนเราอยู่ได้ไหมในช่วงนี้แต่ว่าที่สอนเราอยู่ด้วยอาจารย์เอาขาก้อมาที่นี่ก็ได้เอาอย่างนั้นเหรอครับผมผมสอนหลายที่ปอตีด้วยอัดด้วยงั้นผมก็ต้องแบกทายพอร์ตมาทุกรอบครับเดี๋ยวเอา A7 มาก็ได้ครับ alright let's continue our อันนี้ปิดได้แล้วนะครับปิดได้นะโอเค the lights can be seen as two different Uh, things. Uh, the first one, uh, according to the classical electromagnetic theory, the light we have like a wave, right? The electro one kind of electromagnetic wave. It has light propagation with different interference effects. Uh, but from another type of experiment in physics, like a photoelectric effect, uh, the light has an interaction to the matter. And uh, in this way, the light should be explained by uh, should be considered as particle. Okay, it can be either EM wave, electromagnetic wave, or particle. Okay, uh, the light has a number of physical properties uh, which is related to wave and other particles. The light travel in a straight line path in homogeneous medium, and uh, When it uh, faces uh, a boundary or the cut, uh, junction between uh, different material, uh, you're gonna get some effects, and that effects will have two main uh, things, uh, main issues. The first one is called refraction, right? When it hits something, it get refraction, and that's uh, quite easy. You can observe it, but there is another way uh, when uh, the molecules of the substance are quite way far away from each other, the light can propagate through that molecules, that substance, and that's called refraction. Okay, uh, when the light travels through a substance, uh, when the atom is far away from each other, uh, there will be time lags. Time lags can be caused by absorption. Okay, the atom. Inside that molecule, we absorb the the light, and then it will emit. Okay, that process is called re-emission. Okay, uh, like one guy absorb the light, and then he will let the light go further. Okay, but it's not 100% perfect because that guy, that atom, will absorb the energy of the light as well. Okay, so uh, this time will cause time lag. Okay, and the light depend on a uh, light. Propagation depends on the structure of the atom in each material. Uh, with this effect, the speed of the light will not be the same as that in the vacuum or in the free space because some atoms will absorb the energy and let the light go after that. Okay, that is time lag. Uh, with that um, tiny perspective. Uh, When you go to broader perspective, you can see the light that have large uh, wavelength like this. Okay, when you have larger wavelength, it means you have also higher speed of the light. Okay, and uh, when you go from the material number one or substance one to another material, this is the junction. This is the boundary between material one and material two. Uh, if you go to a material that has denser particles or molecules, okay, 
Then so my molecule will cause tablets. Okay, uh, it's gonna, uh, it will absorb the propagation of the light. Okay, you will get less wavelength. Okay, uh, in any uh, medium, the same property that hold for the light is the same frequency. Okay, the, the light would have the same frequency for both material, but when the light has larger wavelength, it can travel more. Right, it can travel with a longer distance. So this would have more speed. And uh, the people who study quite often uh, about the light would uh, prefer a new quality which is called refractive index. Uh, another term of refractive index is the index of refraction. Okay? Uh, th this uh, quality doesn't have any unit. It is the ratio between the speed of the light in the background or in the free space divided by the speed of that light in that medium. Okay, for example, we, when we talk about the medium one, that's called speed V1. Okay, when we consider material number two, we're gonna have the speed V2. So what is the uh, property of the refractive index? If you have a uh, very really loose molecules, okay, the, the atom or the molecule are quite far away from each other, there will be less obstruction for the light to propagate. So the light would have higher speed, right? Because they have less obstruction, they would have they would have higher speed, and the higher speed will cause lower ratio, lower refraction, uh, refraction in, refractive index, okay? When your refractive index is lower, it means uh, the light can propagate very well in that material. In the opposite way, if the molecules in that uh, material are quite dense, so the molecules are tight, the light, which is a kind of wave, cannot propagate well because there are so many obstructions, okay? There are several times of obstruction. The web cannot propagate very fast or very quickly, so uh, you would have lower speed at the denominator. The lower value will cause greater value of the refractive index. So when you consider any material that has high refractive index, it means the light or the wave cannot propagate well in that structure. Okay. Khong he me refractive index soong, but I'm a form of sang man by the din up. My form of an obstack soong. ตรงนี้มันต่ำมันก็จะทําให้ค่ายอินเด็กซ์มันสูงนะครับโอเคอ่า can see that the wavelength depends on how dense the material is okay uh, when the light travels through a transparent medium it uh, encounters a boundary part of the ray is reflected part of the ray is uh, enters uh, the second medium. Uh, one of the prominent examples is this one. Okay, you have the laser light that starts from the emitter like this. Okay, it propagates in the ray number one. Okay, the black area represents the air. Okay, correspond to the air. The air covers this the, this red box. This red cubic is known as lucite block. Okay, it's a kind of stone, it's a kind of sapphire, but it's a transparent meat. <clears throat> you can see the ray of the red light like this. Of course, the first component will be reflection according to the uh, ray number two. And part of that will propagate through the second medium, which is the loose side block, okay, cubic shape right here. And uh, here is the ray. Okay, what you can observe, this is the intensity of the, the uh, incident ray. The refraction component has lighter ray, right? It means the intensity in the second ray is less than the intensity of the incident ray. You can see the light uh, uh, laid here, yeah, okay? And uh, regarding the transparent area, uh, the light has the dispersion somehow, okay? You can see 
that is dispersion. Uh, it's not just this perfect straight line, okay? That is the, a little bit dispersion. And, but anyway, the, the intensity here of the refract, uh, the, 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 the propagation through the second material is stronger okay, than the, the reflection. Okay? And, but you can still see the, the straight line of the refraction component. The refraction component travels further and it meets the boundary again between the loose side block and the air at the bottom. And of course, uh, you can see that you get the reflection component along the part number four, the layer number four. And uh, layer number four will meet again the boundary between the loose side block and the air. You get a reflection somehow here, yeah, but it's very, very hard to, to see, right? But there is uh, some amount of reflection. The strong it is the the propagation through the second material, which is the air. Okay, this one is stronger than the reflection. Okay, you can see the uh, ray number five. Okay, and it goes further. Okay, or every time you can see there is reflection and refraction. Okay, um, the ray that enters the second medium is bent at the boundary. You can see the is not in the straight line, okay? It's bent a little bit from the actual expected ray, okay? It's bent a little bit. And it's uh, this behavior, okay? The deviation from the actual direction, like this, uh, is called refraction, okay? Refraction means you have deviation from the actual line, Okay, from the tinder. Uh, during my generation, uh, my scientist teacher would uh, would ask me to imagine if you have something very sharp and you want to kill the fish in the water, you cannot throw that. I don't know the word English. Uh, spear. You, spear, right? Yeah. You cannot throw that one to the fish directly because there is refraction of the fit a position inside the water yeah that will be the same thing if you let the spear uh, go to this you cannot uh, get the fit at all okay uh, yeah the diagram of uh, of that propagation uh, can be clearly written like this okay this is the incident lay and there is an angle theta one Okay, and the refraction component uh, can be measured with respect to the normal line. Normal line means the line that is perpendicular uh, tablet. Uh, can be shown in a table like this. Uh, you can see uh, we have three phases. Solid phase at room temperature, liquid phase at room temperature, and, and uh, plus gases, gas phase at uh, zero degrees okay uh, of course uh, from the base uh, from the basic idea as i told you if the molecules stay quite dense right, uh, the molecules are very dense in some substance they would absorb more and more right and uh, they cannot let the light propagate well right so the the light will not be quick in that material like a solid okay because they have strong bond they are dense okay the light can be absorbed so much and that's why they have high reflective index okay high reflective index me means you have lower speed okay lower speed for the light in that uh, material and uh, the reflective index between our uh, solid and liquid are not much different from each other but usually solid would have more uh, uh, reflective index because their molecules are very, very well packed. Like diamond. Diamond is very strong and the light cannot well propagate. Okay? And that's why they have such high value of reflective index. Okay? And uh, if you talk about, if you consider the air, right, something in the gas phase, the molecule of that uh, phase are quite far from each other. They are quite light. 
the, the correction of the light to each atom or each molecule is not so often. So they can travel with high speed. High speed means you have lower refractive index, and that's why you have the, the ratio very close to one. It means the speed of the light uh, in that material is very close to the speed of the light in the background. In the background, in the, in, in, or in the free space, we don't have any molecule, right? There is no obstruction for the light to propagate at all. But this one has almost the same speed at the light. That's why we have the ratio very close to one. Okay. Uh, the refractive index cannot be less than one. Okay. Every material should be should have refractive index greater than one. Okay. Because the speed should be lower than the in the the free space. Okay. Uh, both tables uh, give us almost the same value. For example, uh, uh, ice. Okay, in uh, solid phase, one point three zero nine. Uh, one point three zero zero nine as well. Okay, in another table from the second same book. Okay, this is taken from another book, but the value are almost the same. Uh, this experiment is made from uh, yellow sodium light. Okay, you have the the light, the lamp that is uh, set up uh, from sodium. Okay, and uh, it produces the yellow light. Okay, with uh, lambda 589 nanometer. Okay, if you wanna, uh, if you deal with some problem with the fact that you just take the the value of the refractive index here. Okay. And uh, uh, one more thing is the manipulation uh, from a speed. Okay. You, you know, uh, V1 by V2 is C by, it's uh, the ratio between, uh, is the ratio between the speed of the light by refractive index. And uh, C is the same. Okay. Uh, so uh, we get N2 by N1. And uh, you can see that you have a universal ratio V1 by V2, lambda 1 by lambda 2, and N2 by N1. Okay, and uh, principle of geometric optics are as follow. Uh, you have uh, incident ray like this, and uh, you get refracted ray, you get uh, refracted ray. Usually in the uh, typical geometric uh, idea, the incident ray, incident angle, will be the same as the reflected ray. And uh, with a certain value of the incident ray, you can get uh, a perfect polarization or complete uh, polarization. The incident and the reflected, reflected rays are in the same surface, and this surface is called uh, uh, the plane of incidence. Okay, that plane is called plane of incidence. Uh, in the conventional geometry, the angle of reflection and the incidence would be the same. It means theta a and theta r reflection should be the same. Okay. And with a certain value of uh, incident lay, okay, this guy, William Broad Snell van Loyen, okay, he is a Dutch astronomer and mathematician, discovered that uh, there is a certain angle. Uh, this he created a law, it's known as Snell law, okay, William Broad Snell or in that generation, he, uh, every work is written in Latin. Okay, you may see his name in, in Latin, like uh, Dus and Snellius or something like that. Okay, uh, but his actual name in in English is some something like William Broad Snell. But his name in Dutch is William Broad Snell van Roy. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on where you use your name, okay, and uh, he creates Snell's law from the, the ratio between uh, the speed of uh, the light in each material and refractive index, and other than 
you he moved uh, the same amount to the same side. He, he get uh, N A side uh, theta A equal to N B side theta B. So the refractive index on the side A on the material A times the side of the is, uh, incident angle on the side A equal to the product between the refractive index in the second medium, material B, and the side of uh, the angle or the refracting uh, index in the side B, material B. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, in 3D view, 3D uh, picture, you can see it like this. Uh, you have unpolarized uh, light, like this at proper case. Okay. It hits the surface okay, between the air and that material. It can be either solid or liquid, like uh, water or crystal or, or diamond. Okay. And uh, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, um, with a certain value of angle from the normal, uh, there will be uh, reflecting component and reflecting component would have only two axes, axes of the E field. Okay, the first one is parallel to the uh, the surface. Another one is perpendicular to the former axis. And uh, the, the the important thing is this component. Okay, reflecting component. The reflecting component has a polarized E field. The E field lies horizontally or parallel to the uh, reflecting plane, like this, uh, reflecting sur surface, sorry. And with this three layer, the incident ray, reflecting, reflecting layer, and reflecting ray, we create the plane which is called plane of incidence, okay? Plane of incidence, the yellow one, okay? And some guys, some scientists, uh, find uh, the relationship for that phenomenon. The plane that contains uh, incident and reflect rays, and uh, the normal reflecting, uh, the normal light to the reflecting ray is called plane of incident. The angle of incident is called polarizing angle, but later you will see another word for this. Okay, it's dedicated to a uh, spatial physics. The light that reflects. Uh, the light will reflect only when uh, electric field is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, uh, and parallel to the reflecting surface. Okay. Um, okay, here yeah, you can see uh, the circle symbol. Circle symbol means uh, the, the polarizing axis is directed out of this uh, slide, this, this plane. Okay, and uh, the reflecting component has only a single uh, polarizing axis, okay, E field, like this. And the reflecting component has two directions, the one that is parallel, parallel to the, this plane, and another one is perpendicular to this plane, okay. And it means one can, and it means can deal, and it means to keep to hang up. This is our uh, theta P, theta P means polarizing angle, uh, you can see that reflecting angle will be the same as the incident rate. Mm -hmm. And theta B is the angle uh, from uh, in, the, in the second material. The most important thing is that the angle between the reflecting component and the reflecting component will be always 90 degrees, mm -hmm. which is right angle. Okay. Oh, you can get 90 degrees only when you project the right with uh, at the angle of a uh, polarizing angle theta p okay and uh, in order to find this theta p uh, it's someone has found have has found a relation which is uh, tan theta p equal to the ratio between reflective index of the destination material b by the refraction index of the the first material, which is material A. And that guy who discovered this ratio is this person. 
His name is uh, David Brewster. So is the the position, right? Which is the, uh, uh, given to, uh, which was given to a very important guy. He was a Scottish uh, physicist. Uh, he he's best known for his uh, experimental work in optics, and this one, the one that we are studying right now, polarizing light, polarized light. Okay, this guy. Uh, David Brewster in uh, 1812 uh, noticed that uh, the angle of the incident is equal when the angle is uh, of, of incident is equal to the polarizing angle. The reflected ray and the reflected ray are perpendicular to each other. Both will have 90 degrees to each other. And from he, his condition, we can get uh, theta b equal 90 minus theta pi, uh, theta p, which is polarizing angle. And when you take the side function to this side, okay, to, to both sides of this equation, this equality, you get psi theta b, you get psi 90 minus theta p, and then you end up with cosine, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, can you simplify this? You have uh, the so-called uh, psi psi, right? Uh, psi x minus y equal to psi x, right? Cos y minus cos x or psi y, right? Can okay, you substitute x by 90 and y by theta p? Okay, you can see that at this location, you're gonna get uh, psi 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. And here you get cosine theta p. Okay. But in the second term, you're going to have in the second term, you're going to have uh, cosine of 90, but cosine of 90 remains 0, right? So uh, the second term with this product, okay, will vanish. Okay, will disappear. With this term, you're gonna get uh, cosine 90 degrees and psi theta p, right? But this term is equal to zero. So that's why we don't have the second term at all. What we have is only cosine theta p, which is this one. Okay, cosine theta p. And uh, uh, when you substitute this one into the former Snell law, the Snell law, this one, uh, this one. Okay, this was discovered by Snell law, the Dutch uh, scientist. You put uh, that one cosine okay, into that. Uh, you get the same angle at the moment. Okay. And a psi theta p is the result from uh, Snell, right? But Brewster substitute the second term, which depends on the theta b. By actually, it was psi theta b, right? But right now, it becomes cosine theta p. And because we have the same angle theta p, you move cosine theta p to the left hand side, you move in a reflective index of the, the first medium to the right hand side, you get another ratio that's called psi by cos cosine, right? Psi by cosine is known from your, uh, um, I don't know, in um, your high school, right? 10 theta p equal n b by n a. And that's the Brewster law, okay? This can be used only when we project the light at the polarizing angle, theta p. Okay, uh, but it is at this condition, the reflected light is completely polarized. You, we will have E field only in the horizontal way. Okay, uh, now we left at one of the examples about the 
uh, Bruce the Law. Uh, during daytime, we are at the swimming pool, and the sunlight reflects the smooth surface of the unoccupied swimming pool. The, the reason why we talk about unoccupied swimming pool is that we assume that the surface of the water is smooth, okay? But actually, the surface of the water in any canal or in any lake is not going to be smooth, right? Okay, uh, assume that the reflective index of the air is one, okay? But actually, it's not one, right? Because air has some molecules. They, got, they, will, they will obstruct the light, right? The reflective index should be a little bit greater than one. But for simplicity, we're going to say it's the same as the vacuum, okay? One. Water should have more reflective index because the water has denser molecules than the air. It, they will obstruct uh, the pro light propagation. So the reflective index of the water is greater than one for sure, okay, 1.33. And then they would like to know uh, angle of reflection, which is uh, theta b, right? Angle of reflection is the uh, when the light is completely polarized. So now it's not theta b. It's theta p, polarizing angle, because they say the light is completely polarized. And in the second quality, what is the corresponding angle of reflection? Angle of reflection will be 90 minus the polarizing angle, right, according to this formula. Okay, according to equation number 18, when you know the polarizing angle, you can get the uh, reflecting angle theta b. And how could we find the polarizing angle? You need to use uh, the Brewster law, right? Which is 10 theta p equal to uh, 10, 10 of polarizing angle equal to reflective index. And the destination, which is material b. The effective index of the incident material, which is uh, the first material A. Okay. So you substitute one at the in B, yeah, the numerator. You substitute one. Oh no, 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 no. Destination is water. So in 1.33 to this uh, to the numerator. N, which is the initial material one at the denominator, 1.33. So, theta p can be computed from arc 10, arc 10 of uh, 1.33, okay? Actually, 1.33 by 1, right? but we, you don't have to worry about number 1, but right? division by 1 is nothing, okay? Uh, เออแล้วเวลาสอบแล้วไปให้ใช้เครื่องเล่นจะทำไงเนี่ยอาร์คแทนอ่ะสิ่งโหถ้าเกิดไม่มีเครื่องคิดเลขคุณกดอาร์คแทนไงสี่ส่วนสามไงสี่ส่วนสามเออแล้วถ้ามันไม่ใช่หนึ่งจุดสามสามอ่ะมันเป็นอย่างเงี้ยมันไม่หนึ่งจุดสามสามมันวัสดุอะไรก็ได้อย่างเงี้ยแล้วไม่ให้ใช้เครื่องเลขจะทำไงเนี่ยมันมันแปลงเป็นเศษส่วนได้ง่ายๆไหมครับอย่างเงี้ยเนี่ยของพวกเนี้ยมันเป็นเศษส่วนง่ายเลยว่ามันขึ้นกับเขาทดลองอ่ะผมก็บังคับเลขไม่ได้อ่ะเห็นไหมครับก็สู้ก็ผมก็ถึงอันนี้ไงแต่ครูโคเขาพยายามต่อต้านตลอดอ่ะเขาถือว่าวิธีสอนแบบผมอ่ะมันเอาเปรียบของพวกภาคภาษาไทยก็ผมไม่อยากให้ใช้แต่ว่าเลขจริงๆมันบังคับไม่ได้ไหมเพราะเขาวัดจากการทดลองมาวันนั้นครับในการสอบนะโอเค anyway just take uh, the the arc ten of this ratio 1.33, you're gonna get the angle of I think 53, right? 53.023 or something like that. 
0.03, yeah, some 0.6, okay, and the angle of the reflection, this uh, reflecting angle would be 90 minus this value, so it's going to be 36, somehow, 36 or 37 degrees, okay, then you get that one. In the second sub-question, in the opposite way, at night, during the night time, we, will, we won't have the sun's light at all, right? But the owner of the swimming pool installed the light bar and the ground, okay, and the, the floor of the swimming pool. So the light is turned on, so the light will start from the floor of the swimming pool, and it hits the surface uh, of the water, that's the boundary between air and water again. But now the destination is no longer uh, water. The destination becomes air, right? And here is the light bar. This is the floor. The light bar will emit the light from the ground or the floor of the swimming pool. It's gonna move like this, okay? Uh, yeah. They would like to know this uh, theta p and also this uh, theta b again. Okay, theta p in this case will be uh, arc tan reflective index of the destination. Destination right now is air, and here is water, right? Destination. For us, right now, is in reflective index of air divided by reflective index of the, the, the beginning, which is uh, beginning medium, which is water. Okay. So you get uh, arc tan 1 by uh, 1.33. Uh, simply speaking, is arc tan. Uh, three by four, right? Three by four, and that will be approximately three thirty-six point nine or something like that, right? Degree. And in order to find theta b, theta b will be ninety degree minus theta p, right? So it's going to be ninety minus thirty-six point nine. So it's going to be fifty. Uh, three point something point one, okay, like this. Okay, and that's the problem for the uh, for the night time. Okay, in the, at the swimming pool. Uh, now we uh, reach uh, we we reach the application of the electromagnetic wave. The first one is uh, radio audio communication, which was. Uh, in the classical way, uh, it was the first uh, technology that uses EM wave for telecommunication. Like me, okay, telecommunication you can uh, side uh, communication over a long distance. Okay, uh, that will simplify the human life. Okay, you don't have to wait for the long time for the letter or something like that. You can communicate to each other almost immediately. Okay, uh, nowadays immediately. Okay. Uh, sound wave enter the microphone and uh, the sound wave are converted to electrical impulses. Okay, uh, if you take a look at the diagram, when you speak, you have the mechanical work uh, with the sound wave and it hit the diaphragm, okay, a small piece of paper. When the small piece of paper inside the microphone vibrates, that's why I hope. That will create the, the electrical powers. The electrical powers are, is modeled to carry a wave, okay? Because at each radio station, you are allowed to use a single central frequency, okay? You cannot use other frequency. Otherwise, the signal will, be, will interfere with the other radio station. Uh, okay. Uh, this one uh, will be uh, will pass the audio amplifier. So the, the waveform 
has greater size, okay, the waveform has greater size like this. And then it's transmitted to the broadcasting antenna, okay, uh, and the antenna will create the electromagnetic wave according to your sound, okay, like this. This is the idea of uh, radio communication. And if you go into the detail of uh, radio receiver, how the people at the receiver receive this, the sound wave, of course, they need to have the antenna. The antenna will absorb the electromagnetic wave from the air. Okay? The electromagnetic wave then that is absorbed will be passed on to the so-called band pass sealer. They will throw away the component that is out of scope okay, to get rid of something that is not, that doesn't belong to our attention. They are, they're going to amplify, okay, increase the size of the wave uh, of the signal of the of the electromagnetic wave, and then they modulate. They modulate. They they use the code or the multiply with uh, the, some uh, frequency, and then you uh, they amplify again the the result audio, and it's connected to the speaker so we can hear the speaker. But this is might be this might be uh, too old for you right it's the ancient generation it's not your generation at all uh, the next one is radar radar stands for radio detection and ranging radar was first uh, invented for the military purpose okay uh, this one will rotate to find any object that emits electromagnetic wave okay uh, for even better use it, the people in the army install the radar system into a vehicle so that they can carry to everywhere. Okay, and uh, yeah, they can better detect any uh, aircraft or even weapon like a uh, rocket and so on. Okay, for security purpose. Okay, ma. มนุษย์ทะเลาะกันนี่มันดีหรือไม่ดีเนี่ยฮะทะเลาะกันมันถึงต้องเอาชนะกันด้วยการคิดค้นของพวกนี้นะพอทะเลาะกันเสร็จก
there will be communication between our GPS and you, and you and your friend, you and the ground station. Okay, when you want to take landing, okay, you need to communicate to other people. Okay, you cannot go and take landing immediately without informing anyone. Okay, otherwise you will get crashed and <laughs> your passenger will will be unsafe. Okay, this system is called Automatic uh, Dependent Surveillance Broadcast ADSB, okay, which is the typical standard right now. Uh, another application of the radar is to uh, predict uh, the weather. Okay, if you transmit the, the electromagnetic wave in radio region, it will be reflected from any particle, for example, the raindrop. Okay, the raindrop will reflect the electronic wave you can receive it, you can calculate how far. And if you calculate with a certain time, and if this particle moves, you can get the speed of that particle. So the weather forecast can tell you how many days you're gonna get the storm or rain, okay, from this prediction. Another application of the radar is to use it on road to check whether any car, any vehicle had the speed, uh, speed which is beyond a certain limit or not. Okay, the police would have radar gun. He shoot this gun, but it's not with the piston. It's made with electromagnetic wave. The electromagnetic wave will hit the car, and then the electromagnetic will return to his gun. He can observe how far, and if he put two times, the radar gun will calculate the speed of the car, okay? And if your speed is beyond, for example, in Thailand, 120 km per hour, you will get fired, you get punishment uh, by the, the policeman, okay? And another radar application was discovered accidentally by this person, his name is Percy Spencer. He works as radio, uh, radar engineer uh, with the company which is called uh, Rateon. Okay, his company is Rateon. He just uh, leave, uh, left a uh, chocolate bar okay, in his pocket like this and at a certain time he needs to maintenance the uh, radio wave cavity, which is the main stream of the of radio wave, he put his chocolate bar in his pocket, and when the radio wave hits his pocket, also his whole body, okay, <laughs> the chocolate bar melt, okay, and he just noticed, ah, the radar waveform has some energy to his chocolate bar. And in that year, he quit the job from the company and built up the microwave oven when he's owned, but he was very rich after selling this new product because it's very useful for everyone, right? To, uh, to heat up uh, some frozen product, okay? From this accident uh, uh, phenomenon, okay, uh, chocolate bar. Uh, here is the resonant cavity magnet, so it creates radio wave, and he le he left uh, his candy bar or chocolate bar, and it was melt. Okay, so uh, melted. So he he quit the, the job, his position from the company. He he created the microwave oven. A new way, or uh, not modern. Okay, it's the uh, modern age of the. Electromagnetic wave is to use in the wireless communication. This is the mo your mobile phone or smartphone, and this is the base station trans uh, tower or base station uh, trans transmitter or transceiver. Uh, but base station transceiver. Okay. Uh, the base station can be connected to each other by line. Okay, and. Uh, they are going to communicate with the mobile phone with, uh, in wireless way, okay, with electromagnetic wave. So uh, you can transfer 
the data from uh, base station to base station, from mobile phone to base station. If you move to another cell, you're gonna you, you're gonna be uh, connected to another base station. Okay, this kind of thing is called uh, cellular wireless communication. If anyone comes to me, the wi fi is going to to learn from this. This is the basic of our Okay, uh, AM, FM, and AM, and another type is the uh, infrared, which is used in remote control. Okay, the remote control that you use at home uh, adopts the region of infrared. Okay. And uh, infrared was also uh, is also used uh, for security check uh, at the airport like this uh, because it's impossible to use thermometer to every passenger, right? It's not convenient at all. You have to use uh, uh, thermal imaging to scan whether his body has the red color or not, and the red color could predict somehow the temperature of that part in that in that person. In the passenger, okay. For example, this guy has the temperature thirty six point uh, eight. So we would uh, suspect that he would get some infection from uh, maybe coronavirus, something like that. Because this is for security purpose for some country. Okay, when they don't have any infection, they need to screen. They need to block some people. Okay. Uh, in fact, it also used for security purposes at home, okay, when there is tip thief or some bad guy okay, who want to steal something. Uh, you cannot see it by, by eyes, right, because everything is dark. But if you use the infrared thermography, you can see the bad guy easily, okay, from the camera. Uh, apart from infrared, we go to the higher spectrum, which is ultraviolet. The, the people uh, use ultraviolet to kill harmful bacteria uh, at uh, exports uh, section. Okay, for example, the high technological country like Australia, they produce several agricultural products and they kill the bacteria by using the ultraviolet so that their product can be transported to other countries. You know, Australia is quite far away from other countries, right? They want to export their product. They have to use this idea, okay? When you have less product on, uh, less bacteria on your product, you can keep it longer, right? And then you can sell it in uh, uh, some country that, is, that are quite far away from you. Okay, another application of UV is to check whether your bank note is correct or not. Is it the genuine or not, right? Uh, of course, the bank note should be made with special kind of stuff so that you can uh, avoid the application easily. And one of the things is the, 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 the bar that uh, is sensitive to the ultraviolet. Okay. The, if you work in the bank, okay, you need to be able to use this device with the ultraviolet check uh, for some special uh, uh, beauty purpose, okay, you can uh, get the, uh, but it's not popular here in Asia, uh, but in country like in Germany where I have lived, the uh, sun bath shop was really popular during my time, okay. You have to go to the sun bath and there is this lamp, the lamp will create a uh, ultraviolet, something like that, so that your skin can get tan, okay, it's called sun bath or uh, tan, for a tan uh, purpose, sun tanning, okay. And uh, another application is the x-ray, uh, because the x-ray can penetrate the living tissue and uh, it is well absorbed at the material that is dense like a human bone, okay. So you can differentiate the tissue and human bone easily by using x-ray. Okay, and uh, the last one, we use gamma ray to kill the living cell, okay? Uh, if you, if the doctor discovered that there is a cancer cell at this location, they just insert the, uh, they just point the gamma ray to a certain person. So this one, 
will be the uh, intersecting point, okay, the gamma ray from three rays will have very high intensity. Okay. The last one is that you inject your uh, liquid with, uh, with a substance that can create gamma rays. The gamma ray will get out of, okay, the, this liquid will go everywhere in your body and they will emit uh, the gamma rays. And you use the probe to check, uh, you can see uh, how the, uh, everything inside your body looks like okay, by using, uh, watching this uh, uh, monitor, okay. Uh, that's all uh, the application of uh, electromagnetic wave, and we finish the first chapter electromagnetic wave. See you next week. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 Thank นะครับเอาอยู่ที่ต้องจะเลือกเก็บคะแนนไงเอาข้อ